Hey, what's up guys, it's Matt with The Movement System. In this video, we're gonna review two different research studies to try to figure out what is the optimal volume for muscle hypertrophy. The first study that we're gonna look at evaluated high volume resistance training with five sets of 10 versus 10 sets of 10 in previously trained individuals. So that study will give us an idea of how well-trained individuals respond to higher volumes of resistance training. The second study that we're gonna look at was a meta-analysis, meaning that it covered 15 smaller studies. By looking at that study, we'll be able to see what the overall research is pointing towards and how the one study kind of fits into that picture. By looking at that meta-analysis, we'll be able to see what the overall body of literature says about volume of muscle hypertrophy, and then hopefully draw some conclusions about what training volume is most appropriate in your individual case. Let's go ahead and dive into it. All right, so to start off, we're gonna review this study from 2017 about the effects of a 10 sets of 10 program versus five sets of 10 program. This was a randomized control trial done on 19 previously trained individuals, meaning they had one year of resistance training experience and had been training with at least three times per week frequency for the last three months. This is actually really important because a lot of the muscle hypertrophy research isn't done on trained individuals, so it's really hard to tell what volume is appropriate for trained individuals. So that's why I wanted to specifically start on this study with previously trained individuals and how they respond and then see how that fits into the bigger picture. So this research study lasted for six weeks and there was a training frequency of three times per week. I'm gonna go ahead and put the protocol of what exercises were used up now. So as you can see, there were about five exercises used per day for three times per week. For each of the three training sessions, the first two exercises were the manipulated variables. So one set of participants did 10 sets of 10 for the first two exercises on all three days for six weeks. The other group did five sets of 10 on the first two exercises all three days, all six weeks. That was the difference between the two groups. The three accessory movements each day were the same between the two groups. What you can see in terms of exercise selection here is that on day one, bench press and lat pull down were used. On day two, leg press and lunges. Day three, shoulder press and upright row. So one limitation of this study is that legs really were only trained once per week. So that's a pretty low training frequency and it actually led to a lot of non-significant differences in lower body measurements. We did see some differences between 10 sets of 10 and five sets of five in upper body. And that probably does have somewhat to do with the protocol that was used here with the bench press, lat pull down, shoulder press, upright row, and all those accessory movements, having enough volume of upper body training and having that two times a week frequency. All right, so now that we know the protocol that was used and the training status of the individuals in the study, let's go ahead and look at the results. Some of the results that were measured were muscle thickness changes, lean body mass changes, and strength changes. Over six weeks, there was not a significant difference seen in muscle thickness between the two groups, and this probably does have to do with the short time period of this intervention. It's really hard to see significant gains in muscle hypertrophy over that time period. Out of what was measured, the significant changes really came in strength and some measures of lean body mass. In terms of lean body mass gain, the five set group had larger increases in trunk and arm lean body mass gain than the 10 set group. In terms of strength, both groups increased strength, but the five set group had greater increases in bench, press, and lat pull down strength than the 10 sets of 10 group. Just to clarify the terminology used in this research study, 10 sets of 10 was the German volume training. So if you see GVT, that was referring to the 10 sets of 10 protocol. If you wanna look at the specific numbers, here's what the strength changes looked like for each of those movements. Overall, the results favored the five sets of 10 group over the 10 sets of 10 group. This isn't entirely surprising since the recommendation for strength gain typically is low to moderate volume. And the theory is that we can use higher volumes for greater hypertrophy. So to evaluate that idea of higher volumes always equating to higher hypertrophy, I wanna take you to the statement at the end of the conclusions that the researchers made. To maximize hypertrophic effects, it is recommended that four to six sets per exercise be performed as it seems that gains will plateau beyond this set range and may even regress due to overtraining. So while there wasn't great data on muscle thickness measurements, because that is hard to do in a short-term study, what the researchers concluded from the insignificant changes and from the measures of lean body mass changes throughout this study was that overall, even for hypertrophy, there tended to be greater gains with the five sets of 10 group than the 10 sets of 10 group. 
these studies on well-trained individuals are actually really hard to come by because it's hard to get well-trained individuals to adhere to a specific research protocol for longer than six or eight weeks. So a lot of the data that we have on this is really short with smaller interventions. That said, from this research article and from other research that I've read, I do tend to agree with the results that the researchers wrote here that the 15 sets per week is probably more optimal for most individuals than 30 sets per week, where a lot of people will become overtrained and not see any additional gains. Importantly though, this was only one study. So how does this compare to this meta-analysis, which actually evaluated 15 different studies on muscle hypertrophy? So because this is a meta-analysis, it's a little bit different. There's no individual protocol. Actually, the protocols, the types of measurements done were very different between the 15 different studies. To give you a little bit more of an idea of what was included in those 15 studies and the variability, we can look at this chart. This shows some of the parameters from those research studies. The study duration, maybe 10 weeks, 12 weeks, 11 weeks, 20 weeks, and the training volumes used and the protocols used vary pretty greatly as well. You can see that some of them use as low a volume as two sets per week, and others used really high volume up to 28 sets per week. In terms of how they measured hypertrophy, some used ultrasound, some used MRI, some used DEXA scans, meaning that there's not great consistency between these measurements. This actually highlights the importance though of understanding how to evaluate a meta-analysis with a lot of different research protocols compared to understanding a randomized control trial with one protocol. And we really have to have both and understand both. So now you're probably wondering though, what are the results of this meta-analysis and what did it show in terms of optimal volume for muscle hypertrophy? So from this meta-analysis, we see that the findings indicate a graded dose-response relationship whereby increases in resistance training produce greater gains in muscle hypertrophy. This is interesting because this bigger analysis of many studies showed that in general, more volume equals more hypertrophy. That said, a lot of those protocols were one or two sets very low volume compared to what we would consider a more moderate volume of like 10 or 12 sets per week. So what that tells us is that there is a trend for more volume equaling more muscle hypertrophy, but when we look at those individual studies at very high volumes, there probably is a point where we can go too far. Up to 15 sets per week for most people, untrained and even trained individuals, we tend to see more hypertrophy from 10 to 15 sets per week than we do from five sets per week, for example. But from looking at those smaller studies like the German volume training study, we know that that trend doesn't continue all the way up to 30 sets per week. There probably is a point where it levels off and even decreases and we see less growth with more volume. My overall interpretation of the research is that optimal hypertrophy is probably going to be different for every individual. For some individuals, it may approach 20 or even 25 sets per week, whereas for other individuals, it may be around 10 to 15 sets per week. You really have to take this information and then interpret it and use it in your program design strategy. There probably are going to be periods where you're going to want to use lower volume and then periods where you're going to want to push towards those higher volumes. But we don't want to just stick with one volume and, and carry that on forever thinking that it's optimal because even if you do hit optimal, it's only going to be optimal for you for maybe 6, 8, 12 weeks and then you're going to want to switch it up. I think the overall takeaway here for most individuals trying to maximize muscle hypertrophy is try to find the good point where you can respond to without getting overtrained and then slowly creep that volume up. Maybe that starts at 15 sets per week and that gets to 16, 17, 18. And then you go into a strength block where you're training with lower volume and giving your body a different stimulus. We don't want to just carry on increasing volume forever from 15 to 20 to 30 to 40 sets per week because we're going to see those diminishing returns and you're not going to keep responding to those increases in volume. If you guys want to learn more specifically about how to implement this information into writing great strength conditioning programs, I actually have a continuing education course called Program Design 101 that you can check out. Program Design 101 is an 8 hour continuing education course where I teach you how to write strength conditioning programs. For the muscle hypertrophy section of that, you're going to spend an hour learning about all the research of muscle hypertrophy, see my example programs, and then move on to writing your own program with the templates that I provide you. You will repeat that process for strength, for muscular endurance, and for power and plyometrics so that at the end of the course you have a portfolio of great programs that you've written. Designing a strength and conditioning program from scratch can be very challenging. Program Design 101 gives you a system for writing those programs, shows you examples, and breaks down the research into actionable strategies. If that's something you're interested in and you want to learn how to write great programs for your clients, then go ahead and check out the link in the description below. If you're not already, make sure you go ahead and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any future videos. 
and follow along on Instagram as well at The Movement System. Thanks so much for watching, guys, and I'll catch you in the next one.